This is Josh, and this is his Mark 7 Toyota Celica. Now, when I say Celica, this might not be what comes to mind. In 1970, Toyota debuted the Celica to take on the Ford Mustang. It was a sporty, rear-wheel drive, kind of compact car, and it had a beautiful design. It still looks fantastic today and has aged awesomely. It looks like a Mustang, but smaller. Then in 1977, the second generation Celica was shown to the world, sporting a more sharp and angular look. But most notably for JDM fans was the introduction of the Celica Supra in 1979. It was sporting an inline six that made a whopping 110 horsepower. This model eventually turned into the Toyota Supra we know today and became a legend in its own right. But back to the Celica. In 1981, the third generation was unveiled. It had pop-up headlights to the joy of car enthusiasts everywhere. It had better aerodynamics. It had a rally version, which had a 2.1 liter turbo, which made an impressive 332 horsepower. That's like strapping three Miatas together. This model raced in the Group B Rally, which was a high stakes, high thrills, high death count, which gave it a special place among fans. The fourth generation Celica was a complete redesign for the late 80s. It dropped rear wheel drive to move to a front wheel drive system. It had new two liter four cylinder engines. The Toyota Supra cut ties with the Celica, becoming its own model. While this may seem like things were getting boring for the Celica, there was one addition that paved the way for all future models all-wheel drive. The GT4 had all-wheel drive and a 2.0-litre turbo making 190 horsepower. Toyota started to see some serious success in rally championships and fans were noticing. The fifth generation Celica took the car straight into the 90s with modern styling, it had better all-wheel drive system, made more power, had better handling and it still had pop-ups. The sixth generation released in 1993 and quickly became popular. Toyota built on previous generation's success in rally and improved the GT4 bumping it up to 250 horsepower, giving it a better all-wheel drive system and including technology improvements that improve the handling and performance of the car. Yeah, it lost the pop-ups, but no one really cares because it drove so well around a dirt road that it redefined what a Celica was. While every generation of Celica had its ups and downs, they left behind a legacy that was bigger than just another sports car. So what was the Mark 7's legacy? Being the model that ended it all. Now that is a bit rough, it's not totally this car's fault that it happened to be the last one. Economic downturn and very complicated reasons meant there wasn't as big of a market for Celicas as there was before. But still, it's not the most loved Celica by car enthusiasts. The seventh generation didn't come in a GT4 model. Gone was the all wheel drive system, gone was the turbo, and gone was the pop-up headlights. The styling was kind of divisive. There's even a rumor that uh, it was actually modeled off a wedge of cheese. So I don't know, take that with a grain of salt or cheese. The cheaper 1ZZ engine was a little underwhelming, only making 140 horsepower. It also wasn't really known for its reliability. While the higher spec 2ZZ engine had a decent amount of horsepower, it also wasn't the most reliable engine. Overall, it wasn't a great start for the Mark 7. But despite its shortcomings and apparent unpopularity, I think this car is a true hidden gem and can shine on its own pretty easily. Josh's 2002 Mark 7 Sleeker is a great example of this. So tell me about your car. I own a 2002 Toyota Celica, um, that's the pre-facelift edition. It has a 2ZZGE engine in it. In Australia, yep. the Celicas only came with the 2ZZGEs, yep. which is the better engine. It makes 180 horsepower. In my opinion, the lower engine just isn't worth it. So if you're in another country looking for a Celica, I'd recommend going for the 2ZZ. Came with the factory TRD elegant body kit, uh, which is the front spoiler, the side skirts and the, the rear lip. Mine is a six-speed manual. Absolutely beautiful factory color. It's like a, a beautiful carbon blue, which is like, looks black for 90% of the time, but if you get like in the right light, you can see like a really deep blue. And it's like a metallic color with flakes, so. A relatively rare color, I believe. I bought it with 107,000 Ks on the clock. When I bought the car, it just had its 20th birthday, which I think is kind of cool. Cause yeah. like, you know, for its age, I do think it's in really good condition. And if you don't mind me asking, how much, how much did you pay for this car? This so time? he wanted 14 for it. Um, but there are a few things that he didn't put in the ad, which uh, allowed me to get it down to 11, which I think is pretty reasonable for a car of, of its age and class with the low kilometers and decent condition. Oh well, yeah, like a, a car that low kilometers um, and that modern, like you're getting a lot of, 
also comforts in this car, I think. The old JDM cars are so much fun, but man, they are so uncomfortable. Like the Miata <laughs> is not, like when it's hot and you have no aircon and no power steering and you like are just sitting there in this fish bowl, you're like, I love this car, but I would sell this for a Corolla right now to be comfortable. It's actually really funny you say that specifically, because my other car is a Corolla. I've got a 2006 Corolla wagon. This is more comfortable than it. Part of the reason why a Celica goes for that sort of money is that they've never been the most popular car. Yeah. You know? Like they came out with some Subarus, some Hondas that are a fair bit more popular, and now those cars are asking a fair bit more. But obviously if you're comparing it to a Type R Integra from, from the, the same era or a Rex from the same era, like obviously I'm not gonna necessarily compete performance wise, but those cars are asking, you know, a lot more, you know, 30 to 40 grand for some of them. And Celicas have a rich history of rally. Um, and I think that it was a misstep of Toyota to not release an all wheel drive equivalent. Mm. Um, but you know, here we are, it's what we got. And those all-wheel drive versions would have been so expensive anyway. That would be like a WRX price point. You've done a few things to the, to the car since then. Yep, pretty minimal at the moment. I have put BC coilovers on it, uh, an inch and a half lower at the front and two inches lower at the back. Uh, I've put the, the Anki RPF1s on it. Uh, they're 18 inches. Uh, I was really humming and hiring about well, the- What was the original ones? Were they 16s? No, it came with 15s. Before the uh, the fitment and the wheel gaps and like it was just not really a hit. And that's, that's one of the things, the, the stock wheels and the fitment is letting the car down. Yeah. And that just has given it a lot more of a sleek profile. It's really gotten that aerodynamic kind of look. Uh, I've also um, uh, had the exhaust done, so it's nice and loud now. It uh, The stock exhaust on it, like it sounded like nothing. It sounds a lot better now, it's uh, just cat back. Um, it's got that four cylinder a Japanese car sound, so it sounds kind of like a Civic or a, a... It sounds like a motorbike sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> kind of, it kind of sounds like a bass. It's kind of, yeah, yeah. it's like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do actually Classic. have an underglow kit, uh, but I haven't put it on yet. Just so. for that like perfect Need for Speed Underground kind of vibes. Yeah. Which by the way, we should talk about. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I'm you're a big Need for Speed Underground fan? Definitely. Underground 1, Underground 2, and Most Wanted. Those group of games actually end Midnight Club 3. Really, um, kind of set my taste in cars. Coming from a, a perspective of love for uh, Need for Speed Underground and what that represented in the car scene at the time, the, the Celica is, it's one of the perfect cars for it uh, because it's, yeah, ricey. <laughs> as soon as you do these little mods, I think the car just comes alive. It doesn't have that awkwardness anymore. And there's one other thing that's always really important to like a, a car, especially for car enthusiasts, is how it drives. Is it fun? It's a rock. Well, I guess the only way to tell how well it drives is to go for a drive. So let's do that. Was that the lift? Yep. Holy shit, that sounds awesome. <laughs> what do you do? That sounds sick. So you can hear like at what, 6200 RPMs, there's yep. like a lift kick where like the engine goes Ooh, It snaps, like you can hear the difference. Yeah, that's crazy. The sound wasn't noticeable before the exhaust. Right. After 20 years, like mine's not in the best condition, but it is a good gearbox. Like the six speed feels really nice. Like it's really nice just being able to shift up so quickly. When the lift kicks in, does it actually, do you feel the, like the extra power? Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. I definitely feel like it's, um, I think they say it's about a 20 horsepower boost. Okay. You wanna, awesome. You wanna take it for a quick spin? Oh, you, you, wanna, you wanna let me? You heard it first here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get experienced Toyota's sports car from 2002. How sick is that? Lucky me. I like the exhaust sound. The exhaust is just, it makes you feel very, feels very connected. Yeah. Yeah, I think like between the, the throttle cable, the exhaust sound and the, and the just the center of gravity, like oh. it just feels Shit, so that great. is a difficult clutch, I'm gonna be honest, sorry. That's all good. That's like a... The bite point's weird. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> I don't know, it's strange. But it's not, it's not bad, it's just, I think it just takes getting used to. Yeah, it's, it's stage one clutch. All oh, right. 
I swear, I drive a Euro car for three days and I'm like, <laughs> wrong, wrong button. Do you mind if I give it a little bit of gas here? Yeah. Holy shit! Dude, that kicks in like... Dude, that's sick. This all sounds really good too. Just has that Japanese like four cylinder sound. I don't know. A lot of people like don't. A, Honda. a lot of people <laughs> don't like the like that sounds like oh chitty Civic with the yeah, exhaust. No, I, like I it. love it. It's just yeah. like it just sounds like fun to me. Yeah, definitely. The gearbox feels really good too. Actually, yeah. it feels like there's no slop in that that shifter at all. It doesn't feel slow at all. I don't. I don't. Well, I mean, it's not. It, like I mean, in my opinion, it's not a slow car. So like you know, but the things that things it's that not I don't a think slow are... car per se. I think it's yeah, just the, the way it has no low end torque is why I think it has a reputation of being slow. Holy shit, sorry. I don't know how you don't just do that all day. Like you don't just hit the red line all it's day. It's tempting. I would literally. <laughs> this is so much fun. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. I mean, like, yes, it's not all-wheel drive and not turbo. I mean, to be fair, that feels very similar to a turbo almost, although like different rev range, but yeah. like how it, like turbo is kind of Wait, like- kicks in. They kick in, yeah. This thing would be so much fun on a mountain run. I'd just be like, <laughs> like getting the hit in that lift. That's a lot of fun. It's the perfect amount of fun where the car isn't so fast that, yeah, you're gonna get to like 100 so quickly that, you know, you're going around a mountain and you're like, you have to hold yourself back because you're gonna go to jail. Yeah. It's fun and it feels lively and handles really well. This, this is a fun car. So, is this the best Celica? No, probably not. But most people don't have $80,000 to drop on a GT4 6 gen. And to be honest, I think this car can be a lot of fun in its own right. For an affordable sports car from the early 2000s, this car has the comfort and the fun to be a daily driver that you can take to the mountains. And that's really all we want in a car. Thanks to Josh for letting us show off his car. It's absolutely sick. It looks awesome. Don't forget to tell us what we got wrong about Salikas. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Daycrew Media and make sure to follow Josh at hex.selly. If you liked this video, make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with what we're doing. But until then, thanks for watching.